Myself and my two flatmates, D and H, all 19 female, just moved into a three bedroom home on a suburban street in one of the major cities in our country. Since moving in, we've had experiences with weird, unexplainable shit in and around the property, both while together and alone in the house. None of us have ever believed in the paranormal or the supernatural, and while there are definitely logical expla explanations for all this, we're just at a loss of what they could be. A little quick background. We viewed the property for the first time on January 9th of this year. It was the first place we went to be viewing for. We continued looking at other properties, but the leasing agent contacts us on January 14th to offer us the house. Obviously, we find it very strange that they offered us the house so quickly, but since it's usually pretty difficult for a group of students to convince a landlord to rent to them, and it was the best property we'd viewed, we accepted. They wanted us to move in very quickly, which was also a little bit of a red flag, but we had other people inspect the property for us and didn't find anything super wrong with it, so we went forward with the process. We signed the lease and move in on February 4th, less than a month after we originally viewed the property. More information for context purposes. Place was built in 2005, sold on November 20, 2020 to our current landlords, who bought it as an investment property after being on the market for a month. The current landlords have never lived in the property and we have never met or had contact with them. We deal with everything through a property manager. Nobody has lived in the house since at least November 2020 and the listing that we found for it was posted in early December 2020. Generally, a house like this wouldn't stay on the rental market for more than a week or so in our city because good housing is pretty scarce. We know absolutely nothing about the previous tenants or why they moved out and neither did any of the agents we spoke to. We also have no clue why the house was on the market for so long. The rent isn't ridiculous. All of the rooms are decently sized and have great views. It's in the zone for multiple good schools and within walking distance to a major public transport station. There were no super obvious things wrong with the house. And when we looked through it for the first time, apart from just needing a good clean, when we asked the letting agent, she said something vague about how the property was just given to their company from a different real estate company. Our house is at the end of a shared driveway with two other houses. You have to go up a set of external stairs to get to the front door. Downstairs, we have an open plan lounge and kitchen and a small bathroom. Upstairs are our three bedrooms and another shared larger bathroom. The house backs onto a small hill and then a busy main road. There's a fence with two gates that separates us from the main road, which is kind of redundant because there's also a huge gap in our fence line that backs onto a different shared driveway that can very easily access from the street. Onto the weird shit. When we first moved in, at some point within the first week, we each felt a specific presence within the house while thinking we were home alone, and each felt the presence so strongly that we had to search the house to confirm that we were actually home alone. While doing our initial cleaning, we found what seems like urine in both mine and H's wardrobes. There was also back scratch marks in my wardrobe that the property manager couldn't explain. Like, looks like an animal or small child had gone at the wall with something. Won't come off the wall either. We've woken up in the middle of the night to hear loud banging on the side of the house that's facing the fence in the street. None of us investigated the source at the time because as curious as we were, we're also super passionate about not being murdered. There were also no trees close enough to the house that could have made contact with the ward to explain the banging. While cleaning again a few weeks later, I found what looks like dried blood on the windowsill in the lounge. I have no idea if we missed it during our initial clean or if it was new. 100% did not belong to any of us. Dee kept waking up with bruises all over her legs that she couldn't explain. Legitimately looked like she'd been on the wrong end of a paintball gun. H found a random chicken bone in her balcony. We are primarily vegetarian household, and the only access to the balcony is through her room. We can track our power usage through an app, and there have been times where, we've, where we'll have a large spike in power usage at times when none of us have been home. One time in the middle of the night, I woke up to what I thought was someone having a loud conversation in the next room. Turned out to be my laptop, which had somehow turned itself on and had started playing an episode of Friends. 
which would have been fine. If the laptop lid hadn't been shut and locked with both a passcode and facial recognition. It has never happened before and has happened once since, also in the middle of the night. H woke up one night in a state of sleep paralysis. She says she saw a man sitting on her floor next to her bed, watching her and eating cereal. She has never experienced sleep paralysis before and has not experienced it since, has no clue who the dude was. We have a sensor light on our deck at the top of the stairs. You have to stand in a very specific place on the deck for it to activate. Just to emphasize, the light will not turn on unless you stand in that very specific place. And even then you have to make some kind of movement for it to see you. While home alone in the lounge, Dee kept hearing noises on the stairs and would open the curtain expecting it to be me coming home from work. The sensor light would be on, but there would be nobody there. This happened multiple times throughout the night. This type of sensor won't get tripped by wind or light, and there are no trees or plants nearby that could have tripped it either. It's not just us experiencing weird shit. One night while Dee's boyfriend was over, Dee and I left the house, leaving him at home alone. H was at work. He texts us shortly after we leave the house to tell us that Dee's bedroom door shuts on its own, and then he heard distinct footsteps down the middle of the stairs. Dee's boyfriend, as a note, is the most cynical motherfucker on the planet. Definitely wouldn't make something like this up. Usually, while the windows are open, the doors are shut on their own due to convection currents, but since it's currently cold as balls, we had shut all of the windows in the house prior to leaving. One of our friends stayed with us during one of the lockdowns, and she also felt a presence upstairs and heard noises while being home alone. Since moving in, H and I have experienced problems with sleep. We've never had problems getting to sleeping prior to moving in. I regularly wake up at 3 or 4 in the morning for no discernible reason. We are by no means light sleepers. Originally, we chalked it up to getting used to a new place, but it's been 4 months now and it's still happening. In addition to all this, there have been more instances that we can count where we'll hear weird noises from somewhere in the house that are outside of the standard house making noises as it cools down and creaking pipes that we just collectively decided to politely ignore. Again, in the interest of not getting murdered. And finally, we have felt distinct simultaneous declines in our mental health since we moved in. We were each super keen to move out and be independent, but we've all had a significant drop in our mood and well-being, to the point where Diaz had to up her antidepression dose. There are other factors that could possibly have affected it, for each of us has experienced a kind of low energy that we haven't felt before we moved out and we couldn't explain it. Our hypothesis. Obviously, all of these events have some kind of explanation, unrelated or not. All of these things could very well be unrelated and coincidental. We're just considering things that would explain all of the strange shit that's been going on. Kind of half as a joke, kind of not. Our first hypothesis is that we have a poltergeist of some kind, would explain the weird noises, the bruises, the low moods, the waking up in the middle of the night, sounding like someone is in the house when there isn't, and the person sitting on H's floor. We've talked about drawing protection runes on all of the entrance points to the house and saging the place, but beyond that, we don't really know what else to do apart from just accept life with our quirky new roommate and hope that they don't go all Annabelle on us. If the place was haunted, it would definitely explain why the agent was so keen to get rid of the property so quickly to a group of naive teenage girls, because we've had no other serious problems with the house. Our second and probably 10 times scarier option is that we actually have someone living on or around our property. There are two possible places where this person could be staying. We do have an attic, but the only internal access point is in the wardrobe in my room. I definitely would have heard somebody climbing in and out of that access point during the night or noticed stuff being moved around. There might be an external access point on the roof, but we haven't been able to get up there to check. We've heard stuff coming from the roof before, but nothing that we could really definitely say was somebody climbing in there from the outside or someone moving around up there. The other one is a space underneath the house that we've affectionately dubbed the murder hut because to be honest, it looks like a serial killer's den. When we first moved in, there was a collection of old furniture there left by, we're assuming by the last tenants, a rug, a chair, a set of drawers, 
but nothing concrete to suggest there was someone currently living in there. No sleeping area, no food scraps or garbage anywhere. We also thought of the possibility of somebody not physically living and sleeping on the property, but maybe someone just regularly walking onto the property through that big gap in the fence and causing problems. We're really at a loss of what's causing these things. We're getting a security camera for the front door and now deadbolts on the gates outside, in addition to trying out cleansing and purification rituals, just to cover all of our bases. We're also thinking of requesting information about the previous tenants from our property manager and asking about getting the hole in the fence fixed. Can't afford to fix it by ourselves. And we're just being dumb and paranoid. Or is this actually something strange going on in our house? The story is about my father and my uncle had this experience when they were kids. Fair warning, it might get a bit lengthy. My father and his elder brother, my uncle, were like best friends from childhood. My father used to live in a joint family. He used to live in a very small village called Mararashtra State, India. The village is located a bit in the jungle with a population of hardly 500 to 800 people at the time. Farming was the main occupation with little to no electricity and also lack of wall clocks. So they used to decide their time according to the daylight. It was around 1966 or so. Now I know it sounds like medieval time, but that was a situation for tribal people in India. So my father then, eight or 10 years old, and my uncle then 15 or 16, used to get up early in the morning around 4 a.m. and used to go into the jungle to cut the woods for daily needs like cooking. But before that, my aunt, the elder sister, used to make some breakfast for them like bakri, can of an Indian bread, and sabji, curry for relevance. She either used to pack a tiffin for them so they could eat later, or used to deliver the food by herself in early dawn with my grandfather, who used to start the farm's work. The jungle was near the farms, and my father and uncle used to go to the familiar area of the jungle, which my aunt was very well aware of. She used to track them down easily, have their breakfast together, and then come back together with the wood logs. One day, my uncle and father got up early in the morning as usual. It was still dark and it was winter. Sunrise is a bit late during this season. My aunt was still sleeping, so they decided not to disturb her, and they picked up their axes and went for the jungle. That day, they decided to go a bit further than usual, but in reality, they went way too far. They were not even able to see the lantern light of the village. They started cutting a tree and gather little sticks from the ground. They got very busy and concentrated for the time being. After one and a half hours or so, my uncle got suspicious over why the sun was not rising yet. By this time, there were supposed to be birds start singing, and no rooster was making that typical morning noise. No cattle were mooing, no dogs barking which comes along with the shepherds. All that was an eerie deep silence. It was so silent in fact, that my uncle got worried that they were pretty early than the usual time. So he started to hurry up at his work. Now, before going on any further, let me be clear about my uncle. He's a very tough guy. Nothing scares off the dude easily, and he's respected by the whole village. Same goes for my father. But this time, it was different. He didn't know why, but he was feeling that there was something very wrong, and something was watching him from deep jungle, and my uncle knew it better. It was not some tiger, cheetah, jaguar, or wild boar. He felt something was wrong that day. And then all of a sudden, my father and uncle heard the voice of my aunt from a long distance. They couldn't see her, it was just a voice. My uncle got very suspicious as the voice was coming from deep jungle and not from the direction of the village. My uncle told my father to tell her to come to them. So my father responded to her voice and told her to come to them. The voice stopped for a moment and then she replied, No, you come to me, hurry. I have brought your favourite food. At this moment, my uncle realised what it is. He's heard a lot of stories from the villagers of a voice which takes away people, sometimes never to be found again, or if founded, will be in a suicidal mental state. The local used to call such paranormal activities as chakma, meaning the paranormal being who will hypnotically fool you to commit suicide. As soon as my uncle snapped out of his thoughts, he realized that my father, being a naive kid, started walking towards the voice and started responding to my aunt's entity's voice. It was taking my father's name and yelling, come in this direction, I am here, 
waiting with the breakfast. My uncle ran towards my father with full speed, grabbed him by his shirt collar and said, don't listen to her, come on, we must go home. My father said, but it's elder sister, she is calling us, I am hungry. By that time, my uncle has already grabbed my father's hand and told him she is bluffing with us, she has no food now, come on. My father was about to start arguing with my uncle, but then he looked in my uncle's eyes. He certainly looked scared and his hand was shaking. Father too sensed that something was wrong but started walking fast towards the village without a word uttered. Why are you going towards that side? Come here. Follow my voice. She said. My uncle's still holding, my father's hand said. Ignore her. She's not coming to us anyway. No need to say he was trying to divert my father's attention and play it cool so that he doesn't panic. As they were walking towards the village, they felt as if an eternity to get there. Now, being Hindu by religion, my uncle started mumbling mantras of Lord Rama, Hindu god. The voice slowly started fading away as they were getting closer to the village. My uncle took a long sigh of relief when the dog started barking, all of a sudden from the village direction, or noticing that some of the village lamps were close by. The whole village dogs gathered together and started barking and making that loud crying noise as like wolves. My uncle reckons the entity might still be following them. My uncle and father almost started running towards the village and finally reached the village. The voice was long gone and there was a sense of lightheartedness. My uncle stopped near our ancestral temple, joined his hand, bowed his head and said thank you. My father was still confused with the situation. Once they reached home, my uncle and father saw that my aunt was still in her bed. My father, being called a naive child, cursed her for beating them in the race. Turns out they both left the house way too early, at 2am or even earlier, and it was a no moon night so it was dark already. My father got fever for a few days, and when my aunt told him that she didn't go up that morning, let alone make the food, my grandfather and uncle knew better and are thankful to God to this day. <laughs> About five years ago, I had just moved into a new house with my wife at the time, and two kids aged two and a half and one. My two and a half year old was very articulate for his age, and so one day we were, talk we were walking out the front door. He points across the house and asks, Mommy, who's that little girl over there? Well, my wife and I just kind of froze, because he was kind of kid that never made up any imaginary friends or anything like that. But the moment passed, and we kind of forgot about it. About six or eight months later, I remember I was in my bedroom late at night. I have a large window in my bedroom that looks out into my backyard. I also had a couple strings of lights overhead that illuminated the yard perfectly. One night, I was up studying for a class the next day. When I looked outside, I saw that my kid's swing set had one swing going back and forth in a perfect pendulum motion like someone was on it, while the swing next to it was dead still. This was not the first time this happened. It was the third, I think. But it was the instant that I remember the most clearly and took the most notice. I honestly have no idea why I didn't think to tell my wife or to take a video, but I just stood there in the window and watched it for about two minutes, and it kept up perfectly constant, consistently. I grabbed my flashlight and walked out to my deck to get a better look, still swinging. I'd been studying lots of science classes at that point, so my head was in the space of, I'm going to figure out the rational explanation of why this is happening. It was breezy out, so I walked up to the swing set and held my hand in different places around the swinging swing, and no breeze. Plus, the swing next to it was still dead. Also, my thought was that if it was the wind, there was no way it could keep a perfect back and forth motion. If a swing gets even a little of it, it would have collided with the one next to it. Anyway, I'm not sure if I had the previous encounter with my son in mind or not, but I had a very certain feeling at that moment that there was a little girl swinging on the swing. Almost like I could see her, but obviously couldn't. I also felt very at ease and not frightened at the least. Then after about 5 or 10 minutes, I stopped the swing just to see what would happen, and it remained stopped. I remember apologising out loud to the girl for stopping the swing, and told her that she could swing whenever she wanted to. But it never happened again after that, and I haven't had any additional encounters in this house. I looked up public records and asked the landlord if there was ever any little girl that had died in this house. Nothing. The only info that I could collect is that a few years before we moved in, there was an elderly woman who lived here for 20 years. 
but the owner had the landlord kick her out in fear that she would die in the property, so she had to move in with a family a few states away. So, a few years ago, me and a buddy from the army decided to meet up and catch up. So we decided on the date and place, after several hours at the local pub. It was around 1am, we had three beers each and decided to go pay our respects to a friend of ours who died a few years ago and was with us in the army. We bought a bottle of our friend's favourite booze and drove towards the graveyard. When we came there and started walking towards the gate, we both saw someone standing there. As we got closer, I could defo recognise the friend we were going to visit at the graveyard. He was standing there in his uniform, holding a rifle and was waving at us to come closer. I was freaked out by what I was seeing. So I just turned to my friend and looked at him and asked if he was seeing what I am seeing. He was so shocked he couldn't even talk and was just nodding his head with his mouth open. So we backed away slowly and went back to the car and drove away as fast as we could from there. Where I am from, they say never go close if you see the dead calling you over. But ever since that day, I keep hearing someone call my name behind me when I'm all alone. At first, I thought it was my wife messing with me, but it's not possible because it's a male voice. I'm really freaking out. A few times I left my phone recording all night to prove my wife that I'm not going insane. But every time there's zero evidence, just static and me and my wife snoring. I asked a friend who was with me if he experienced the same stuff and he has. Anyone have any experience with this or know what the fuck is going on? And am I confused why the dead friend would be in a uniform and holding a rifle? He died from leukemia a few years ago, not from during the war. I wanted to share a story from my childhood with y'all. I've changed all the names for privacy reasons. I'm the youngest in my family, and I've just turned 17. All my siblings are married, and really older than me. So all my childhood, I've spent alone in my aunt Sarah and Uncle Jared's house. Uncle Jared is my dad's older brother. My parents both work, and weren't home most of the time. I've always gotten a really heavy feeling when I was in their house and experienced really questionable things. One of the things I vividly remember is seeing a silhouette of a tall man in a coat and hat. He was standing at the end of their hall, just facing in my direction. It was kind of like a shadow, but he didn't move at all. Whenever I slept over there, I have my own room at their house. I would hear furniture moving upstairs and all the bedrooms are downstairs on the first floor. The kitchen is on the ground floor. The second floor only has a big lounge type area for parties and it's always locked. So I know for a fact that no one goes there in the middle of the night or any other time. Once my aunt Sarah and uncle Jared had gone to visit their son who lives in another country. At that time, my older sister Amy, who's 31 and Jess, who's 28, were having their finals for college and high school. Amy is 14 years older than me and Jess is 10 years older than me. So when they had their finals, I would be playing around or disturbing them. So to study, they had stayed at my aunt's house for the time being. After staying over there for a few days, suddenly they came back. When I questioned them, they told me the other day Amy was in the kitchen baking. She has a weird habit of baking when she's stressed. When she felt someone walk behind her for a while, she thought it was Jess. But when she felt someone put their chin on her shoulder, she turned to look and saw no one in the kitchen. She had freaked out, and when she questioned Jess, Jess told her that she hadn't left the room, which freaked them both, and the next day they rushed back. We don't tell our parents about all this stuff, because they don't believe in all this. Another thing I remember is that whenever I was going back to my house, I always had this feeling that I was getting chased, and I would run really fast all the way to my home. My aunt's home was never locked since we live in a gated community and we are really familiar with the neighbours. One time, I remember I went over to her house and it was empty. At that time, Aunt Sarah frequently visited her dad in the hospital. And clearly remember I was standing in the entrance of her room and something ran really fast behind me. At first I thought I'd imagined it, but when I turned to leave I saw the carpet in the end of the hall was a bit turned over from the corner, like someone stumbled on it. I had run from there so fast that time. I have noticed that whenever Aunt Sarah wasn't home, I 
I couldn't stay at her house. Something always happened. Two years ago, Aunt Sarah passed away. The hospital couldn't diagnose what illness she had. One thing you should know about me is I'm, an extreme, I'm extremely good at pretending I'm asleep. So when my mom talked to her sister, I would listen. Not really proud of it, but I'm really curious about almost everything. One time I heard her talk of how Aunt Sarah had told my mom how she, Aunt Sarah, had found something really disturbing hidden above an event in one of the rooms. She said it looked like an animal's gut or something, and Aunt Sarah once had mentioned to me that her brother had found a weird picture that looked like it was drawn of their family living in horrible conditions. One time I heard my mom say that before Aunt Sarah died, she had told my mom that someone had done this, her illness, to her. I was horrified. After she passed away, I just couldn't go in her house. I literally feel like someone is suffocating me. And that heavy feeling in my chest from before is always still there. Whatever is in her house is extremely powerful now that she's gone. It terrifies me, but occasionally I have to go over there and I just have this weird feeling that makes me look over my shoulders every other minute. Please tell me what I should do and what type of entity is so powerful to do stuff like that. P.S. My uncle Jared had moved to another country where his son lives after Aunt Sarah's death. So the house is always empty, but occasionally we go over to hers to make sure everything is in its place and nothing needs fixing. Update. I talked with my parents and they were really dismissive of the situation and said that I was being paranoid. So I showed them this thread in the comments where a few people said they had similar incidents. After reading it, they told me to leave it alone and stop thinking about it. I was getting frustrated, so I took it upon myself and called my uncle. We had a lengthy talk and he told me what I knew was only the tip of the iceberg and there's been a lot going on in that house since they moved in. Here are a few of the things he mentioned in our talk. Apparently I wasn't the only one who saw the shadow figure of a man. My aunt saw it too, but in another part of the house, my cousin's bedroom, which was always locked, even when my aunt and uncle lived there. When my sister stayed at my uncle's house, he said he actually told them to leave before sundown and not sleep there. He said that there's been a lot of activity, but he won't tell me because he doesn't want to scare me. I absolutely love reading other people's experiences on this page, so I thought I would share one of my own. I regularly visit abandoned buildings, so I have quite a few experiences, but this was my first notable one. I was at a farmhouse that had been abandoned since the late 60s, although it appeared more like a time capsule from the 1920s with the things left inside. This farmhouse was quite literally in the middle of nowhere, nothing but hills and fields as far as you can see. The inside of the house was fully boarded, and so it was pitch black inside. On entering the house, there was an instant feeling of being watched, but maybe that was just because it was so dark, it instantly had that creepy vibe. I had forgotten to grab my torch from the car due to the excitement of finding the house and so me and my boyfriend were using our phone torches to look around. Once we had scoped the whole building, we decided to start taking some pictures. We were in one of the upstairs bedrooms at this time. As soon as I mentioned taking a picture, we both heard a noise directly behind us as if a chair had been scraped across the floor. We both looked at each other thinking the other person had accidentally kicked something but of course, neither of us had. There was a stool in the room at that time, which I then scraped across the floor out of curiosity, and the noise was pretty much the same. Either way, I dismissed this. Old houses do make noises, albeit nothing quite like something scraping across the floor. We continued to go ahead to take some pictures. The first picture my boyfriend went to take was a photograph, likely of the previous owners. The photo was an old black and white one, you know the ones where they never smiled. Naturally, just to add to the creepy allure. As he went to take the photo, his phone literally shut off. He had never had trouble with his phone prior to this, but it literally shut down at the exact moment he went to take a picture. At this moment, I started to panic a little bit, and with my phone now being the only source of light, I thought it best that we leave whilst he tries to fix his phone. As we were stood outside, I felt very unwelcome. 
I was also panicking as my boyfriend's phone was now not responding to anything and we didn't have much money at the time, so there's no way we could have afforded a new phone. It was at this point that I decided to talk to any potential spirits that may be around. I explained the circumstance of us not being able to afford a new phone, which is hilarious now that I think about it, and apologised that they felt I invaded their privacy. I then asked if they could fix the phone. After at least 10 minutes of trying to fix the phone, as soon as I asked them to fix it, the phone immediately came back on. After this, we did decide to go back inside. This time around, being inside felt completely different. I felt almost welcomed, but only to explore downstairs. When I looked upstairs, I felt sure there was someone looking down at me, almost as if they were being sure I would not return upstairs. This could all be a series of very freaky coincidences. Or maybe there were previous owners still there who were very protective of their home. The place has become more popular in recent years and many of the personal items of value in the home have been stolen. So it would explain why they wouldn't welcome visitors. Thank you.